Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Yes, and welcome to Coffee Talk. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Don Campbell, a leading Google Plus local search expert, about how you can claim your free listing in the new Google Plus local search results to help customers easily find and connect with your local business. Google Plus Local is a free service that's designed for businesses who are looking to attract new customers at the local level. I'm also going to be talking with Don about the state of small business websites and low-cost, highly effective ways business owners can take control of their online presence. Don Campbell is the president of Expand to Web, which provides tools and training to help businesses succeed online. He's helped thousands of business owners learn how to build an effective web presence and get more customers from the web. Prior to founding Expand to Web in January 2008, Don was a technology evangelist for Microsoft, where he helped partners adopt new Microsoft technologies and presented to C-level executives at Fortune 500 companies. Don is an instructor at the School of Internet Marketing, and he lives in the heart of Silicon Valley. Don is an instructor at the School of Internet Marketing, and he lives in the heart of Silicon Valley in San Jose, California, with his lovely wife and two daughters. Don, thanks for joining me for Coffee Talk. Sure. Thanks for having me, James. Don, now, before we dig into uh, talking about Google Plus Local, let's talk about your experiences with meeting and talking with local business owners. Where are they typically at when it comes to the Internet? Sure. Well, the thing I notice the most uh, when I talk to business owners is that they're so busy just trying to run their business that they struggle just trying to figure out, okay, what should I be doing online? They know the opportunities out there. They hear about it. They see it on TV, and they hear other people talking about it, but they're just not sure where to start or how to take advantage of that for their business. It seems to me that so many of the traditional methods of advertising, whether it be local newspapers or yellow page advertising, are in steep decline as far as an effective advertising tool for many. There does seem to be a little bit of a transitionary period here where we've got small business owners that are kind of caught a little bit in that transition and they're not really quite seeing where to go. With that in mind, what are the challenges that you see them having with regards to bringing in more prospects and customers uh, into their businesses? Yeah, I think you've characterized it perfectly. I mean, they're sort of like in this in-between state of trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing now? And the opportunity that I see that they're trying to get their arms around is, okay, what do I do online? Is it a Yelp profile? Is it a website? Is it a blog? Is it a Facebook page? And so really it's kind of having a, a basic plan for a web presence, just something that they can get started with and kind of work their way through that's not too complicated. So with these business owners, they're realizing, and I get a chance to chat with them a lot myself as well, that they know they need to pay more attention to the Internet. And as you mentioned, there's a variety of different routes that they can go. And many typically don't really know where to start. Where do you suggest that they focus their attention? I really think getting a website is the first. When I was talking to business owner, I like to get them to think of building up their website as the hub of their online presence. So like their own domain name with their own website that they can control as a starting point. And then it allows them to start taking control of the conversation online. The problem is I've heard a lot of business owners that have spent thousands of dollars on a website, some designer that maybe isn't around anymore or maybe they get charged every time they want updated. And that's on the one hand. On the other hand, maybe they don't have a website yet. And then they're kind of stuck. They just don't know what should it cost? What should I start with? But I definitely think the website is the starting point. How important is it to get control? Because I do know the challenge for many, and I've talked to business owners locally and done work for a number of them, and I see their level of frustration sometimes. You'll ask them, you know, I need your passwords for your domain name and your hosting, and I need the passwords to get into the back end of your website. And you get this blank stare, and you realize (laughs) they don't have any control of anything. They don't even know where their domain name is registered. How important is it to really get control of all of that? Yeah, right. That's the most common thing that I hear is is just frustration because they can't update the website. Things are old. All the content on the website is old. And as you know, if if they're not updating their website and it's getting stale, then it's probably not doing as well in Google. 
in most cases for the search results. So it's super important to have control over that stuff. You and I both heard stories of people that are getting charged every time you know you change their website, or worse, they can't change it. They don't have the passwords. The person that built it is gone. I've even heard stories of unscrupulous webmasters saying they'll register the domain name for a business. Then when the business wants to do something else, they make them pay for it or they won't give it to them. So as a business owner, you've got to get control of these basic things, you know, your passwords, your domain name, and the website. It's just like a business asset, I think, that every business owner has to think about and have control over There's so much opportunity for business owners that really take the time to dig into this. Let's talk a little bit about how these websites come together. Of course, in the early days, there was HTML, and that's really progressed a long way, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has. I like to tell this story. When I worked, before I worked at Microsoft, I worked at a company in the early 2000s timeframe as a web content management company. And they had software that they sold to these big companies to manage all their websites. And software cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nowadays, a small business owner can get, I mean, maybe not that exact same system, but something pretty close for free, basically, with, with a tool like WordPress. It opened up some new capabilities for small businesses to manage their website online. That's such a good point because early on, when it did come to creating the website and updating the website, because it was, in a lot of cases, manually coded or maybe created in a software program that was developed for designers such as Corel Draw, you really needed to have a serious level of technical ability in order to make changes or manipulate the text on a page. Whereas today, you mentioned WordPress. That's no longer the case. Now, WordPress really does give you the ability to manage and control a lot of that yourself. And one of the things that I like to talk about with clients is if you can update or if you can type a Microsoft Word document, you can surely update the content on your website. Why don't you take a moment and just explain in detail for small business owners who may not have heard about WordPress. And as you said, it's free and it truly is free. It's amazing how it works and how they can take advantage of this piece of software. You mentioned in the old days, people would create HTML pages for their website. There's various tools out there, but for the most part, you had to know something about coding to make a change to your website or to create a new page. It was really hard to do, and a lot of times you had to pay a lot of money for that. And with WordPress, they've done a really nice job of basically it's a sort of off as a blogging tool, but people have found that they can use it for a little content management system. What's great about it, like you mentioned earlier, you know, I can just go in and they've got a nice little visual editor where I can go in and create my own blog posts or pages on the site, and WordPress stores all of that content in a database. And then you can change the look and feel of that site based on the theme that you choose. So it's really nice for a business person to be able to go in and add content to their site or make a change to something without having to know HTML or CSS or learn a complicated tool to to make those changes. Talk a little bit about how WordPress separates the content from the actual look and feel of the site. One of the things that I like a lot about WordPress is that a couple of things. One is that you can change the look and feel of your entire website because of the way WordPress was created. So it was created with this concept of something called themes. All of the unpost content or page content that you type in is stored in one place in the database, and then the themes are stored somewhere else. And so you can change the look and feel of your site and preserve all the content. And so and they've made that extensible in their thousands of free themes available. There's lots of premium themes available where you get developers that will create really, really nice looking themes for you that you can buy or get for free and, and try it on your website. And the other thing that WordPress has done is they've made it extensible with something called plugins. And these plugins will add functionality to your site. So you can add things like, you know, social sharing plugins or contact forms or visual slideshows or any number of thousands of different things that you can add to the site without having to program all that stuff in. So those two things make the make it a really nice platform to extend and it had a lot of functionality but still you need to update. And the beautiful thing about most of the plugins, and I was on the WordPress.org website looking at how many plugins they have now and it's approaching twenty thousand plugins. <laughs> and <they're> amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> And a plugin is very similar to what you would find, you know, in a mobile device, maybe an iPhone where they call them an app, where you can download an app so you can do additional things. And they're very simple to install, and they really can, as you mentioned, extend that functionality. You also mentioned earlier that you look at the website as a hub, and you mentioned a little bit about social media. Talk about the importance of looking at your website and get into more detail what you mean by focus on your website as the hub. 
when I say the hub, it's really having that website out there with your domain name for your business. That's what I call when I'm saying the hub. I've met too many business owners that are relying on just a Yelp profile or maybe a profile in some business, local business directory and not even taking the time to do a website. What's challenging about that is that those businesses then they own all your content, right? And you don't have a lot of control over what's being said. So if you've got a website, then you've got a chance to rank for the keywords in your local area or for your business name so that you are the, you know, you can represent your business and your brand in the right way instead of just leaving that to some other local directory. I meet a lot of businesses that, that are more interested in the Facebook page than a website, and I still think that a lot of people would agree with me that's the wrong approach because you don't necessarily own that content on your Facebook page, but your website is something with your own domain name is something that you own and you can publish content to. You can be proactive about the conversation that's happening online. I do know as well that uh, you mentioned Facebook, you mentioned local business directories such as Yelp, and these are all great resources to build additional traffic and exposure for your business online, of course. And as you mentioned, the website is the hub of it all. It's really the, the, the main area that you get to control the message. Let's talk a little bit about advertising. You know, typical traditional uh, advertising, of course, is in decline. We know the local papers are struggling because the readership is way down because people are online or on their mobile devices. The Yellow Pages recently just went through a bit of a bankruptcy and a restructuring, so we know they're really struggling. Because, again, a lot of people that used to use the Yellow Pages are now online, so those eyeballs, you know, have shifted as well. A lot of the stuff we're talking about sounds complicated and might sound a little bit expensive, not only in the area of time, but also, of course, a little bit of money usually gets outlaid to put this all together. But you've seen it, and I've seen it, business owners that traditionally spend a lot of money on advertising in the Yellow Pages or in the newspaper or both, who have taken the time to really get to know the Internet and really employ some of the strategies you're talking about, they've been able to cancel much of their paid advertising, haven't they? Oh, absolutely. We were just talking about this website as a hub concept. And I think just to finish up that point, it kind of dovetails right into this next point, is that when you have a plan for your website and you've got content coming through there when you're writing about your product or you're writing about your area of expertise, when your website's the hub, it can automatically feed those other channels. So your, your Facebook page, your Twitter feed, and all these kind of things, your content can, can sort of populate and feed those other channels. And it also is great, like you said, you use your Yelp profile and Google page and all these things to sort of prop up the website and give it more credibility. Businesses that are doing that, it's been very successful because people are out there looking for them, right? And they're using Google and Bing and they're searching and finding them. It's been much more effective than at least the businesses that I've talked to much more effective than some of the other traditional methods and in many cases a lot less expensive too. I have a, uh, a member of one of our courses, Stan and Deb Horse. They own a website called, I believe it's Cabin Creekwood. They have a series of 12 uh, little cabins, a beautiful little place. And you can go to cabincreekwood.com and you can see it. And they've done just a great job. And there's a good example of someone who's embraced these strategies and these techniques and who has had the ability now to not only fully book up their cabins, but to also completely cancel all of their traditional forms of uh, advertising for this new method. I do know as well that you've done some work with a, a number of chiropractors. Uh, Dr. Jerry Anderson comes to mind. Uh, I've had a chance to do a little bit of work with her as well. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of the success stories you've seen with others online that have employed uh, the strategies we're talking about? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's really from both ends of the spectrum. It's number, it's one is when we talk about having some control of the conversation that's going on online, I have a story from that side of it and then, and then the positive side as well where people are just getting lots of new customers. So when we talked about controlling that conversation, have building your web presence and having that, your website be the hub. And I worked with one optometrist who, when we first started working with him, he didn't have a website at all. And we took a look around online and kind of, I always talk, talk about it as looking at his web presence. Like, what's the overall picture? What's the footprint of this business on the web? And what we found is that he had a Yelp profile and most you know, Yelp and in many of these other directories, they pull all this data about businesses from directories that have this. So you don't even have to really add your Yelp profile. It just kind of finds your business usually. And someone had left him a review and it was a bad review. So the, his entire web presence, even if you search for his business, not just keywords of related to you know, glasses, but for his business name, was a Yelp profile with one negative review on it. That was going on for eight months. 
when I asked him, I said, do you know you had this review in Yelp? And he didn't know, know about it. And then when he saw the review, he realized, I know that guy. I, I actually took care of him and he's happy now. Everything is taken care of. I hate to think of how much business he lost. And when he called, the, we talked to his customer. He said, oh, yeah, I'm all upset. You know, I'm happy you totally took care of me. And he said, well, would you mind changing that review then? You know, the, even the customer didn't realize the impact it's having. So just sort of um, being a little proactive about just understanding what's being said about you online is so important, right? And then on the other side of the story, you know, I've worked with so many businesses that usually fall into, you know, one or two camps. Either, either they've got a website and maybe they spent a bunch of money on it and it didn't really do anything for them, or they just don't have a website at all and they're not sure where to start. What I've found is you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a website to be successful. I see too many people get kind of wrapped up in having it be just the right thing. It depends a lot on the type of business that you are, but for most businesses, yeah, just a a professional-looking website that's optimized the right way and is connected to your Google Plus local page, all of a sudden you can start getting some really, really nice results from that. And I've got these businesses that are now getting, you know, driving most of their new customers right from the web. They went from, you know, not understanding what they should be doing to realizing, well, this isn't as expensive or as hard as I thought. There's some basic things I need to do here to start getting successful. And once you have that base, you can work from that and build out and over time and just really, really increase your footprint out there. Of course, we've put together a series of books called the Non-Techie Series. The one thing that I, or one of the things that I really love about this new era that we're in, since WordPress has arrived and things have gotten a lot simpler for business owners to manage and control things themselves, that we have wrestled the, the technology way a little bit from the techies and uh, God bless them, we can't live without them, but they do have a tendency to complicate things, and the more they confuse us, typically, the more we feel we need them. Whereas with WordPress, how many people do you think are using WordPress these days to build their websites online? The last statistic that I saw was that over 15% of the websites on the Internet are based on WordPress. And out of new domain registration, something like 19 or 20% of new domain registered are WordPress sites. That's incredible, and that's a good good testimony to show that this is becoming a little less complicated and a lot easier for those business owners who are really looking to take control of their online presence. Uh, WordPress is definitely top of the list. Back to the hub concept, just one more time if we could, because I do know, and I don't want to belabor the point too much, but WordPress is such an integral part of this because of the hub. Talk about, in simple terms, how... These sites can be set up in such a way that when you add a new post or a new article to your site, some new content to your site, how it can automatically update Facebook and Twitter and send it out in an email to your subscribers. Explain that a little. The nice thing about WordPress is it automatically creates what they call a syndication feed of all of your content. And you don't have to do anything. It's just there. You publish a new blog post, you publish a paid page, and then you can turn it off if you want, but... The idea is you want to be found online. So, you know, as you publish new content, it creates this, they call it a feed, an RSS feed, and it just stands for, you know, simple syndication. What's nice about that is you can hook other things up to it so that to consume that feed. So you can set it up so that as you publish your new blog posting, you know, we always talk about having a, a content strategy or a content plan for your website. And as you publish, you can hire writers to do this. You don't have to do it all yourself. As these new articles are published, it can automatically get picked up by Google will come and crawl your site again, and so will Bing, and it'll get picked up by your Twitter feed and by Google Plus and by Facebook, and you, you can set it up. It doesn't happen automatically. You've got these plugins we talked about earlier that make it really easy to publish this content across all your different channels on the web. And another thing I like about WordPress is it just makes it easy to do those kind of things. It's built for that kind of publishing. You mentioned earlier about the business owners that may have hired somebody earlier and all of a sudden they can no longer uh, find the person who put their website together and they're kind of stuck. Talk about how well-supported WordPress is and why that would never happen with WordPress. Exactly. We were just talking about how so much of the Internet is powered with WordPress that I challenge anyone who wants to add a, some sort of feature to their website, if you're using WordPress, somebody's already built a plugin for it. I mean, I haven't found anything yet that I've had to go hire a programmer for. And I, you and I, James, you know, we're online quite a bit and have many, many websites that we're dealing with. So the other side of that is you've got all these people out there. I mean, any problem that you have is just a Google search away because people are 
you know, publishing on their blog, all kinds of information. It's so ubiquitous out there. It's so well supported now that you can pretty much find information already online about the problem that you might be facing. And you can easily hire people. So, you know, we talked earlier about small businesses had somebody from college, you know, somebody's friend from college built them a website and now they're gone and you can't find them anymore. Well, if it's built on some funky old technology, good luck finding somebody to update the website. Or something like WordPress, I mean, you can find talented developers out there, you know, all over the web to help you make customizations or tweak things or fix things for you. So I'm not trying to make it sound like there's a lot of that needs to happen. You know, you don't have to do a lot of monkeying around with your website, but it's good to know that there's people out there to help you and they're easy to find. Let's talk about Google Plus Local in a moment and before that, what they should include on their website. But even prior to that, let's talk a little bit about, you know, one of my favorite services out there that uh, has really changed the business lives of many who are online who are looking to get things done. And, and, and that's Elance because you mentioned hiring writers. And I remember when I got started online back in 1999. Hiring a writer to create an article would easily run me 100 or $200, depending on the length and the, and the, the depth that, that article was. Uh, but that also has changed online. So we can marry up this entire idea of the WordPress site and the, the need for content. Talk a little bit about uh, Elance, if you would. Well, I still remember the challenge you put down for me. This is probably a year and a half or two years ago, James, where for my blog for Expand the Web, and I was writing about, and I still write about a lot of things, and I feel like some of them were kind of technical, some of them weren't, but I had real specific content that I wanted to write. I was complaining to you that I wasn't writing as much as I wanted to. And you said, well, Don, just, you know, you should hire a writer to help you with that. And I said, I just don't think a writer could do what I wanted to do. You told me, Don, just try it. Put it. I'll give you a template that you can use to post the job on Elance to hire a writer, give it a try and see what happens. I was amazed. You know, I was careful to describe what I was after. I ended up hiring three writers from that one posting because I had so many offers on it. And I got these articles written for, you know, between $10 and $20, right, for my blog. And they just took my direction and created all kinds of great content. So it's amazing what, how many resources there are like that out there. And since then, I've worked with a lot of copywriters, as I know you have too, and I always recommend businesses that I work with point them in the direction of one or, or a few of them just to help them get that initial content out there. So they don't have, I mean, a lot of businesses say they want to write the content, but they're just too busy, and it becomes a point of stress. You can hire these writers that can do a better job than you or I can at writing. You give them the outline of what you said and maybe like a reference article. You'll create a nice, unique, original article for your website. You can have something coming out every week on your website or more frequently than that, which helps you in the search rankings. And let's expand upon that a little bit because I so agree it does. It dramatically helps you in the search rankings because Google has this insatiable appetite for fresh and unique and original content. Talk a little bit about the importance of that when it comes to search. And I know Dr. Jerry Anderson talks about that in our coffee talk with her, very successful chiropractor out of Sacramento, California, that Dawn actually introduced me to. And she's just done an amazing job of implementing these strategies. And last time I talked to her, she said she's getting four new patients a week coming through the door thanks to her online presence. No more yellow page advertising nothing in the local papers, and she's just a, a real pleasure to chat with. But she talks about the absolute importance of a, adding a couple pages of content a week to your site. And that might be a surprise to some listeners, but uh, talk about why. Yeah, I mean, that seems intimidating, right? That seems like a lot of content. But she's really done a good job. I mean, she's amazing. Like you said, she does all kinds of great stuff. And she's proven it. She knows the, the topics that she wants, and she's learned that the more she shares online, the more people find her articles. They're doing some search, even some obscure search. They call these long tail searches. And maybe they just type in, why does my leg hurt, sciatica? You know, there's all these little terms. And she knows that her customers are coming in with all the time, right, as a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And she knows that she's got to write articles about these. And she writes these articles to educate people. And not only does it allow you to show up in the search results, but when somebody clicks on that and you read an article and you learn something from you, then they trust you. And they're more willing to maybe try coming into your office for a visit. And so she does a lot of that, a lot of educational content, which I know you and I are both big believers in. And the other thing that she does that's really smart is that your content doesn't just have to be articles. 
She's got a little inexpensive Kodak ZI8 camera in her office. Mm-hmm. And as customers come through there, she sets it up. She gets the little video and testimonials from them. And she's got over 35 or 40 of those on her website and on her YouTube channel. Customers, they're having all different kinds of issues. I had you know, a problem with my back or I had a sports injury or you know, I wasn't sure my child was having some problems and it turned out she wasn't wearing the right shoes. And there's all these things like that where people are willing to share with others uh, the great experience they had. And she takes advantage. She's really good at that. The web video is absolutely amazing, and I would imagine in addition to having her video on her own website, she probably publishes it on YouTube, which is the second largest search engine on the planet now, second only to Google, of course. And uh, I get a chance to talk with Dan Maynard on uh, how to get YouTube traffic uh, back to your website as well in another Coffee Talk, and uh, she really does a great job all around. And the beautiful thing about that, Don, how much does it cost her to take the video and publish the video and upload it to the site? Nothing. Just a little bit of time. And the equipment she's using isn't that expensive. That camera is $200 at the most, and it's just a very inexpensive way to do that. And many of these cameras nowadays, once you finish the video, you can just hit publish and automatically it'll publish it to YouTube. Right on your YouTube channel, exactly. So there's just all these opportunities. And that's the key is that she's really thought about it and integrated it into her workflow so that she has content coming out regularly. And she has people help her with it. She's not doing it all herself. But... She does a lot. She's set up like little systems for for the stuff to get created. And and then as a result, she's got fresh content of different types coming out all the time. And, you know, it's really helping her. One of the things that I do notice as well is that some of the more savvy web tent of business owners, lots of business owners, of course, have staff. And sometimes there's lulls in the day where the staff really don't have a a lot to do. And many of them will be playing on their smartphones or they'll be surfing the net and kind of wasting time where they what they've done is they've redirected that energy to help them build their online presence because there's a lot of staff members that have a lot more experience with this technology and these strategies than the actual business owner, don't they? So glad you brought that up because I see that a lot too, especially with respect to responding to comments on the blog or, or checking on the business pages, Facebook. Like you say, a lot of younger people um, that are really into that stuff, their job is every so often to go check the Facebook page and inter- interact with the customers. They, that's pretty cool for them, right? They like that, and they're totally willing to do it. And in downtime like that, it's a nice way to keep things rolling. As you know, there's so many little tasks to do like that. Um, the rest of the whole office, understanding why it's important, then all of a sudden everybody's contributing a little bit and then it turns into a little bit thing. And it really has the opportunity to drive a tremendous amount of targeted traffic and, uh, you know, real prospects and real customers back to the business owner. Let me ask you something. Before we move on to Google Plus Local, which is, I think is just an exciting topic because it really is truly free advertising for the small business owner, but what do you think uh, a business owner should include on their website? There's a few things that they should be on every page of the website. If you look at how Google determines what businesses to show when somebody does a search, okay, that Google is always trying to determine, does this search have local intent? Is somebody looking for a chiropractor near them so they can go to the office, or are they trying to do a research project? And so they've got all these ways that they're trying to determine that. And for local businesses to be found, your fingerprint on the web is called the, the NAP, the name, business name, registered business name, the business address, and the business phone number. And those pieces of information should be on every page of your website. I recommend that people put them in the header or they put them somewhere. It still looks nice. It does a couple of things. Number one, it makes it easy for someone to contact you or find directions to your business. Number two, it helps Google understand that all these pages are related to this business. And what Google's doing is it's looking out on the web. It's finding all these they call citations of this business based on the business name and the business address and the business phone number. And the more of those that it finds that match up and are consistent, it's kind of like the signal strength gets stronger. So I always recommend that. I also recommend that they have driving directions on the website. And I like to even have them include a map, like a Google map, and uh, local landmarks, like we're across from the Safeway near this road or things like that, or we're in this neighborhood. So all those local keywords, because people are using those when they do their searches. Those kinds of things, there's a lot of things we talk about, but at a basic level, you really need to have that kind of information on it. Let's just talk about what type of pages or how many pages. Give us an architecture for a simple site for a small business owner. They really 
need to have a home page that's not just a list of blog posts, right? So like a kind of like a static home page and three to five pages is all that's really needed. And then the blog, right? Because the blog is where you can continue to add more. You don't even have to call it a blog. You can call it articles. You can call it whatever you want. But that's a place where you can keep adding new content to very easily. But the, the key pages, I would say, is you should have this map and directions page. You should have like a contact page. You should definitely have an about page. And that about page might be like meet the doctor. It might be here's about our business. Here's what we do. Maybe it's got your featured products on there. And then a home page that really describes who you are and why they should see you. And the thing that I notice so the businesses that do the best on their home page, they've got a nice picture of either business owner or the staff or the front desk or or the doctor or whatever. They've got a nice picture and people want to interact with other people. Otherwise, your website is just another anonymous website out there. And so it's just a few key pages like that to tend to do really, really well. Let's talk about Google Plus Local. This is a new development in the Google world, and uh, some call them the big Google because they are just becoming a, an absolute <laughs> Everywhere. Uh, to put it mildly. But you know what? It's very common these days for local businesses to be absolutely inundated with emails and telemarketing calls attempting to sell them an ad or a listing in some obscure online directory. It seems obvious, but why is Google Plus uh, local different? I know every time I'm sitting at the doctor's office or Wherever, everywhere, any business, you can you can hear the receptionist pick up those calls just all day. They're getting them, right. Hey, we'll put you in the top of, in front of Google. You know, buy our ads, and it's just very confusing for the businesses. And what's great about Google Local is that Google Plus Local, it's it's a free listing that any business can can sign up for. Any business with a physical location can create one of these listings and fill it out with all their information. It really gives you a chance to rank when people are searching for local goods and services in your area. So just so a business owner can get a visual on this, where do they see the Google Plus local search results? What happens is, I remember I was mentioning earlier that Google was trying to determine when you do it, when you type in a search phrase, they're trying to determine local intent. And so what that means is they're trying to understand, is this person looking for like pizza or locally that they want to buy, or are they trying to find a doctor, or what are they trying to find? And they use a lot of clues to you know, if you're logged in to your Google account, they know some things about you, like uh, what your address is and where you search. If you're not logged in, they might look at the IP address that you're searching from. If you're on a mobile device, they have some information there. There's a lot of little things they look at to try and determine because they're, they're trying to give you the best result. You probably have seen when you type in dentist in San Francisco or whatever the keyword phrase is that you'll see in some of the search results, there's a map over on the right-hand side moves around sometimes, but there'll be a map up there with these pins in it. What they're doing is they're showing these people, they used to call it Google Places results. Now they're changing the name to Google Plus Local. But they started to show these local results. You'll see that in the search results when you're playing around. You can notice that, hey, this isn't just a normal search result here. It's starting to show local businesses. That's where a local business wants to show up, right? You want to figure out how to get your business in there once typing looking for your product or service. So this free listing now, and there's no premium listing with them because you can't buy these listings from what I understand. What's the business owner receive with their free listing? What, what can they do with it? Describe what it looks like, how it works. Yeah, so this is just a listing where you get to provide information about your business, including photos, including videos, business hours. You get to, you know, the name of the business, of course, different categories. You can even include information about what kind of products and services that you offer, and if you have parking, you put all this information in this little profile. Basically, you just go fill this profile in, and what Google does is it verifies that you're the real business owner because it either, in order to sort of confirm the listing, they're going to be place a phone call to your business phone number, or they send you a postcard to your business address that you can verify and someone else can't kind of steal your listing. So you've got a verification process. And then you can also put a link to your website in there. And the businesses who do that, who fill out that profile completely and they do it right, and then they link it to a nicely optimized website, those are the businesses that tend to do really well in those local search results. Google's starting to pick up and say, hey, this person is really good at the business and I see other references to their business around the web. 
and they're actively managing their listings. So it's going to give you a little more confidence. It's going to give you a little bit, your business a little bit more, a chance to rank for the search results that are related to you. You talked about earlier, when I asked you the question, where should a business owner focus their attention? You said two areas. One was, of course, the website, which we just talked about. The second is now the Google Plus profile or the Google Plus local page. So really what this is, it's a page designed for the business owners on Google. So this is really a Google page that the business owner gets to control. That's, That's pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. It's a great benefit. And, you know, a lot of businesses are not aware of this either, and they haven't done anything about it. So it's a great opportunity for businesses to go out there, show this thing out, get it uh, completed, link it to their website, and start showing up for searches. It's, it's remarkable, too, how so many areas are not necessarily that competitive. I mean, if you do, if you do the right things, your business can move from not even showing up to, I mean, it's not a guarantee. There, every, every area is different. But you, know, you can make a big difference by just doing some basic blocking and tackling in, in those two areas. You know, you're getting a good website, going out your Google Plus local profile, making those up. Let's talk about mobile. I think mobile, to many business owners, they're missing it. They're not quite aware at this point of really what's going on with the mobile devices because it's come on so fast and so strong. Talk about the importance of Google Plus Local and having a small business website as it relates to uh, mobile. That's a good point, James, because what do we know about mobile? Well, we know that 85% of small businesses don't have a mobile website yet. So a lot of businesses are, don't even have a website, let alone a mobile website. So they're struggling with a mobile. But at the same time, you know, this year, there are going to be more Internet-enabled mobile devices sold than PCs. And so if you hang around kids or teenagers very long, you'll start to see that that's all they do. In fact, my daughter gets her email on her iTouch, and she had to get it on her computer. She had to ask me, how do I get to my email? She didn't even know. So it's, like, amazing how, how kids just adapt. We were just talking earlier about the last conference you were at. Everybody's got taking notes on iPads or using their phones to find out where to go for dinner, and we're all seeing this around us. And so... That's another benefit of having your Google Plus local profile up to date because if you're doing a search on your smartphone, that goes through Google too. Google's going to pull that up and find out that, I mean, that's one of the ways you're going to get your, your business will come up for those local searches. So it's really important from a mobile perspective as well as a desktop search perspective. So we've covered a lot of ground here. We've talked about the importance of small business website. You covered WordPress. You've talked about Google Local uh, and the Google Local profile, Google Local search, I guess as I would refer to it. Let's talk about how this can be implemented. I do know you have a couple of courses, and I do also know that there's a couple of different types of listeners typically to uh, to Coffee Talk here. We've got the do-it-yourselfer types, which is more my style. I'm the guy, the type of person that likes to dig in a little bit and do a lot of it myself. I also outsource a fair bit as well, to put it mildly. I, you know, I'll outsource <laughs> to get other people to do the work for me. And then there's the type of people that would prefer to have it done for them where they don't have the time to do this. So let's talk about a couple of courses that I know you've put together for the School of Internet Marketing for small business owners. So let's talk about this first course, which is entitled How to Build Your Website in a Weekend. I know it's six easy video lessons. Go into detail on what you cover in these video lessons. We talk about, it's like you say, building a website in a weekend. It just shows that it isn't that hard if you have just a little bit of knowledge. We talk about getting your domain name, how to select it, how to build your first website, how to choose a theme, and how to add functionality. So the things we were talking about earlier, we just go into detail. We show you how do you build that first website. And I mean that website that looks professional, gets the job done, it's got a clear call to action on it. And we talk about how do you update that website, and how would you change the navigation menu if you wanted to. So once again, this is for do-it-yourselfers that they don't have to know how to do HTML or anything like that. But they're just interested in saying, well, I want to know how to change my navigation menu or how to publish a new blog post, right? And then we even go into things like how to automate backups so that in case anything happens, you've got a backup of your site, how to optimize one of your pages, how to set up Google Analytics so you can measure the traffic that's coming to your site, how would you embed video or photos or audio onto that website, and you know, a lot of questions and answers. So by the end of this course, 
you would have a fully functional website for your business that's optimized to do well in the search results. And one that, if I may add to, is becomes the hub, as you talked about earlier, of the entire web presence for the business. The other thing, too, is, again, back to the idea of staff. A lot of us have staff, and a lot of us you know, have staff that have idle time. And there's also a lot of us who have staff, and I would say to small business owners as well, who have a real love of this type of work. They love the Internet. They love the mobile. They love working on the iPad or on the computer, where they could send a staff member to take your course. Yeah, exactly. And that happens a lot. They know they're sort of out of business owners I see. They want to be educated enough to understand. You know, they'll send someone to actually go and do the work. I mean, it's very common. And it's a great way to do it because they don't have some of their staff who's maybe a little more tech savvy than them go out and, you know, learn how to do some basic things like this. And all of a sudden, they've got a pretty productive environment where they can update their website, they can optimize things and kind of build on the success as it grows. Now, on the area of staff, let's maybe kind of play with that for a second. Family members, I know uh, the Martell household here, we've got teens who are now in their 20s, 21, 24, and 25. But Victoria, who is still at home these days, uh, we put her to work on a lot of things. And she's worked for us for years within our, you know, our Internet-based business here. She's amazing at what she can do. And I would imagine anybody above the age of eight maybe even six, could probably take your course and put together a very nice website. The other thing is, too, Victoria is away right now for summer at a summer camp for the whole summer as a counselor, so we've lost her. So what does Arlene do? She calls up one of her friends, who's also 17. <laughs> these, these people are already pre-trained. It's amazing. You don't hardly have to teach them how to do anything. So you put them in front of a course like this, and they will just soar. Oh, yeah. So many of the basics, they've already internalized it because they grew up with this stuff. So for those that would like more information on the course on how to build your website in a weekend, simply go to www.theschool123.com. So www.theschool123.com. Let's talk about your second course here, Small Business Local. This is all about Google Plus Local. Talk a little bit about what you cover in uh, this sixth lesson series. So this is really the second part of the recommendations we talked about earlier. First is to have that website that's optimized, that's the hub of your web presence. And the second is to go in and really fill out your your Google Plus local profile and make that sing and then connect it with your website. And that's what we talk about in this course. We talk about, it used to be called the Google Places page, now it's called Google Plus local. We talk about how to completely fill that profile out because Google responds better to the profiles that are totally filled out rather than ones that are just partial information. So we talk about how to claim your business, how to enter in your business information like your your business name and phone number, how to choose the right categories for your business because there's a lot of categories to choose from depending on the type of business that you have, how to mention your products and services in there, how to add photos and videos, how to fill all these things up and some tips on that. We also talk about the mistakes that people make when they do their, their Google Plus local profiles. And there's kind of there's five things that I see people do over and over again that can hurt their ability to rank well. So we cover that. We also talk about online reviews because people can leave online reviews on your Google Plus local page. And then how to make it easy for your best customers to leave you a review there. And then there's also some social tools as Google integrates Google Plus into this profile, there's more and more social sharing tools available, and we're going to touch on that too. So go into a lot of detail about how to really make this listing work for you and how to connect you to your website and, you know, get ranking properly. And for those who would like a little bit more information on that and learn more about the course, you can go to www.theschool124.com, and that's for Small Business Local, theschool124.com. Don, anything else you'd like to share before we wrap it up? No, I just think this stuff's exciting to me. There's a lot of opportunity out there, and so I, I'm excited to meet, meet people and, and help them kind of get their minds around this. There's, there's a lot here that's actually fun once you dig into it, and it's not as hard as people think to get results. And, of course, when they type in either of those website addresses, and one more time for the How to Build Your Website in a Weekend course, the school123.com, the uh, small business local is the school124.com. Of course, with these courses, Don, I do know they're in video and they're in audio. We also provide the printed transcript to them all. But also, there's a very robust member area where people can chat back and forth and get answers to questions. And then there's a twice-monthly live Q&A that I host 
and uh, along with sometimes the instructors over the School of Internet Marketing to make sure we're available to answer questions so that people don't get stuck. So, Don, thanks again for uh, joining me for Coffee Talk. I really appreciate all the information that you've shared. It's my pleasure, James. Thanks. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.